Hey guys and welcome to our WX Python series here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to be starting off with our WX Python series and our goal is basically to cover the entirety of WX Python all the way from the base basic widgets and the basic functionality all the way till the advanced widgets, advanced layouts and all kinds of other features that are present in WX Python. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be beginning with everything and explaining how to set up some basic WX Python code, how to set up a WX Python window and how to customize it a bit. Okay, and in the next video, we'll take a look at creating some basic widgets. Okay, so now before we proceed, let's just briefly discuss what WX Python is. It's a GUI library, okay, like Takeinter or PyQt. Okay, it's used in Python and we can, we can use it to create all sorts of good and interactive GUIs. Okay, widgets, I've used this term already, widgets are basically GUI elements like a button or some text or something like a combo box or a check button. These are widgets. Okay, this is the term that we apply. Okay, so we're going to use these widgets to basically create and populate our window with interactive elements. Okay. And later on, we'll be using stuff like layouts and stuff to properly uh, align these widgets and stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. The first thing I'm going to do is import a WX Python. All right, import WX. Now, if you don't have WX Python installed on your computer, make sure to download it. Okay, for me, I just need to go to the command prompt and type pip install WX Python. Okay, and it downloads for me. All right. If you guys have a different format, maybe maybe you have a different OS or something, then you can download it in however way you need. Okay. Otherwise, for people on Windows and generally speaking, it's pip install uh, wx python. Okay. So uh, import wx, and then over here I'm going to come down and say app is equal to wx dot app. Okay. This is basically going to begin our wx python application. Okay, that's what app means, application. So I'll come over here and then say app dot main loop. Okay, now what is main loop? Main loop is basically an infinite loop. Okay, once you run this code, your GUI basically begins an infinite loop. Okay, because if you think about it logically, your code, your GUI window, you want it to appear indefinitely, right, until you close it. So what is the technique in programming that we use to indefinitely, like infinitely display something or run something? Well, it's a loop or more specifically an infinite loop that only breaks when we tell it to. So that's what main loop is. Okay. Don't think too much about it and you can just go ahead and write these the way I'm doing it. Okay. You don't need to, you don't need to know uh, all the details, but it's good if you do. Okay. So over here, I'm going to make a class because we're going to be using the object oriented approach to WX Python. Okay. Which is the recommended approach for really any GUI library or whatever. Okay. So I'll call this window and I'm going to inherit from WX.frame. WX.frame is basically the WX Python window. Okay. I want to basically inherit that class into our window class so that we gain all the functionality of the WX Python window. Okay, so over here I'm going to make the init function. Okay, self. And we'll leave that blank for now. Or actually, I want to pass in a title parameter. Okay, and before I proceed any further, I just want to create the object down here. Okay, like this. And I'll pass in the title WX Python tutorial. Okay, and now this parameter will end up getting passed into here but we haven't actually applied that parameter yet. And we're going to do this in the super init function. What is super init? Well, if you haven't seen this before, what this basically is that it calls the init function of the inherited class. Okay. Basically the wx.frame class has an init function. And by doing this, we're basically calling it. Okay. And I'm going to pass in some parameters. Okay. Because every wx Python widget, which by the way, the wx.frame is also a widget. So every wx Python widget has a bunch of parameters. Okay. And generally we have the first one as parent. I'll explain that in a minute. And then generally we have something like title or label. Okay. Which is basically the text that you want to display on that widget. Okay. And over here we have titles. So I'll just do title is equal to title. Okay. Title is the name of the parameter and this title refers to 
this parameter over here. Okay. Okay, so uh, there are other parameters, okay, that we can pass in like style, okay, but we'll come to that later because uh, let's just focus on getting a basic window up and running, okay? There's just, hold on, sorry about that. Okay, there's just one more line that we need, okay, which is self.show, okay? And this is basically a method that a frame has, okay? It's a method available to any class that has a frame. Uh, it basically shows the frame or displays the frame, okay? If you don't include this line, the WX Python window won't show up, okay? So let's go ahead and run this now and see the output. Okay, here we go. Here's our WX Python window, okay? We can see WX Python tutorial written up there, okay? We can see some basic stuff like minimize, maximize, and close. We can also resize it and stuff, okay? It looks pretty cool, okay? So there's a few things I wanna discuss now, okay? A few functions, and a few parameters, okay, that I want to discuss. First of all, I want to discuss the style parameter. Okay, now pretty much every single WS Python widget has this, and it's used to introduce extra functionality and uh, special features sometimes, and sometimes it's just small stuff like alignment and stuff. It varies from widget to widget. Okay, so let's discuss some of the styles available for the frame. Okay, so uh, the thing is, the frame is a bit of a unique case, okay? It actually has a default style. It actually has one. It, its style isn't actually zero, okay? Because this is actually what most styles are initialized to. Style is equal to zero means that there's no style. But the frame actually has something called wx.default frame style, which is actually a compilation of many other styles. Okay, it's because I'll show you what the frame looks like without any styles, okay? There you go. This is what the frame looks like without any styles. That's it. There's no caption, there's no minimize box, there's no nothing. And if I come down here, I can't even, I prob okay, I can close it from there. But uh, otherwise we can't close this thing, okay? We can't minimize it, we can't resize it even, okay? I didn't try that in front of you guys, but you can't even resize that thing. Okay, what you need, need to do actually is put in each of these one by one, like wx.caption. And then you see this little thing over here, but we still don't see anything else, like the minimized bar or something. For those, you need to go ahead and use this pipe sign. Okay, we, I think it's called the pipe operator or something. So you put this in, and then you can, uh, uh, it's like a or, okay? It's like that style, okay, as well as this style. Minimize, uh, minimize box, okay? Now watch. Okay, hold on, it's not here. Maybe, maybe I need to do minimize as well. Again, there are a whole bunch of these and it's kind of irritating and stuff, and which is exactly why, okay, I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Let's see. Okay, well, I'm not sure exactly why that's not showing up, but there's also stuff like wx dot resize border, okay? And this allows us to resize the window, otherwise, without this, we can't, okay? I'll show you that as well. You see here, I can't actually resize it, okay? So, the point is, I just want to show you guys that this is how the styles are done, otherwise, with frames, we almost always leave them blank. And we just leave them leave them to the default styles because that default style comprises of the six or seven, uh, you know, the six or seven different uh, styles that it needs to basically look like a proper frame. Okay, so just leave it on its default settings. Okay, but if you guys want to mess around with it, then go ahead. Okay, I'll include a link to my website in the description below. It has a link to all the like it has a table and you can see all the style, styles in it and stuff, okay? You can see what the default style comprises of, okay? All that info is there, okay? I'll just show you the main stuff over here. You can go check out the boring stuff over there later, okay? So, one or two more things I want to show you, some functions or methods that you can, you can use on the frame. First of all, we've got a really useful thing called center, okay? This is a very useful function that Basically, um, how do I put it? It just makes it appear in the center of your screen, okay? It makes the WS Python window show up right in the center, dead center, 
okay? This ensures that it shows up in the center, okay? So this is a pretty useful function to actually include, okay? Because it's kind of weird if your window shows up somewhere in the top left corner or the top right or the bottom right corner or something like that, okay? So just use self.center. I almost always use this, okay? And besides this, well, we obviously have show over here and some other useful stuff. Actually, hold on. There's one more thing I want to mention, actually. There's a size parameter, okay? You can change the size, okay, from the default size. You can make it 200 by 200 if you want to like this, okay, so it's kind of small, but yeah, but what I wanted to show you actually is a self.setSize function, okay, so you can basically change the size of the window even afterwards, okay, like uh, if you want to maybe press a button or something and change the size of the window, you can do that, okay, we'll take a look at buttons in the next video, okay, because those are really important, okay, and besides this, we have uh, hide. This basically minimizes your window. And we also have close and destroy. Okay, we have these two. Now, what's the difference between these two? Well, destroy basically destroys your window. Okay, it like obliterates it and you know immediately basically destroys your window. Close is a more safer option that sort of waits for your window to finish whatever it's doing. Uh, like if your window is doing, is I don't know, maybe doing some kind of event or something, it's sort of a more safer option, okay, self.close. So it's the recommended option, okay, uh, avoid using self.destroy. Maybe it's useful underneath some situations where you need to force close, but uh, otherwise just use self.close. Okay, and what else is there? Well, there's self.disable if I remember correctly, okay? Again, I'll include a link to the website. You can find a whole list of methods available over there. Okay, so that's enough for now. In the next video, we'll take a look at the button and some of the functions that I just taught you over here, like set size and stuff, we'll actually take a look at how to connect these functions to the button. So when I press the button, it's gonna trigger these functions. Okay, so we'll take a look at that in the next video. I hope to see you guys there and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, okay? So I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.